you would, bow your heads with me, please. Heavenly Father, we thank you for doing what you do, for making a way when we see no way, for healing the sick in your time, in your manner, in your way, Father. We praise you for that. Lord, I thank you today for mothers. Without them, we would not be here. And the strength and the courage that you have given them today. Lord, I just ask that the, the words that come out of my mouth, Lord, be, be heard through ears that have been opened and eyes that can see and hearts that are receptive and minds that have understanding because these words were chosen by you, Father God, and I thank you for that. Lord, I ask you to be with those that aren't with us today as they're worshiping with their own mothers. They called and told us so, and Lord, we just thank you for them and, and being part of what we are today. Lord, for those that are here, thank you, and let them be anointed by your word today. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. Watch your eyes as Karen turns on the lights and Rebecca makes her way up here. Good morning, good morning to all of you. Happy Mother's Day to you wonderful mothers. We thank you for everything that you do from the bottom of our hearts. Just a few announcements today. Uh, giving, if you feel compelled to give, you can give in person in the basket by the door. You can give online at findtransformation.com slash giving. You can text the word transformation to 830-293-4483, or you can give on our app. If you have a Facebook and you'd like to let all your friends know where you come to church, go ahead and pull those phones out and check in for us. That just shows everybody who we are, who you are, where you go, uh, and then how to find us too. Uh, we are happy to pray with you at any time. Uh, when things get rough, when things are good, when things just, you just want a blessing. We're happy to pray with you, kind of like the giving, in person, by the door, up here. It doesn't matter. Uh, if you want to text the word prayer to 830-293-4483, you can do that. You can write your prayer request on the back of a transformation card and put it in the basket outside. And we're just happy to pray with you, uh, Pastor Jeff, Karen, myself, um, or turn to the person next to you and they can lay hands on you as well. Uh, if you do not have our app yet, please go to the App Store or Google Play and download Church by Ministry One. Once you've downloaded that app, you can then search for Transformation Church Kerrville and you'll have access to sermons, ways to contact us. Uh, you can submit a prayer request there as well. You can give on our app. Um, and then if we have Bible study signups, that's where you'll find those signups. Next week, Dad will be preaching on freedom, which is convenient for those of us who've been going through the Freedom Bible Study that we have finished and we wrapped up. We go to our conference on Friday afternoon. So uh, speaking of prayers, if you will pray, pray special blessings on that group, I think there are nine of us going. Um, and we would love just, just prayers of hearing the Lord and feeling the Lord and just being able to truly enjoy and feel free from uh, whatever strongholds we have. But then Dad will be preaching on freedom the next day. So, again, happy Mother's Day, and I guess I'll turn it over to him now. Really your guess? I guess. Thanks. Give her a hand. You know, she does this week in and week out, and uh, it's pretty awesome. And she stole my thunder because I was going to talk about freedom, but she's done it. I'm excited about it. She's excited about it. So am I, I'll tell you. Uh, I'm really tinny up here. I can hear that a lot, but thanks. Um, we have, we had a group that for the last 12 weeks have just met together and gone through the curriculum for freedom. And we are bringing it to the culmination Friday night and Saturday. So like Rebecca said, keep us in your prayers. It is a, it is a spiritual awakening if it's anything else. And it's an amazing class. So uh, we do it twice a year. There will be another time that you can uh, take it again in, in September uh, through October, November, and uh, go to the conference in December. So anyway, happy Mother's Day. We are so glad you're here. I hope you know we love you guys. Even the men, we love you too, just, uh, just so you know that. Uh, and I'll tell you, I'm going to do something a little different today. If you'll turn to the person to your right and tell them hi. Whoa. Okay, now you turn to your left. You see, those, those of you that turn to your left... It kind of messed. So just tell somebody hi that's around you. You know, we don't do that enough around here. 
So thank you very much. I appreciate that. All right. Uh, again, I want to say happy Mother's Day to all of our moms here today. You are truly a blessing from the Lord in the lives of so many of us husbands and children. We, we do love you and we honor you today. It's good to see people that are honoring their moms, uh, those that are choosing to worship with their moms at their churches. We're all for that here at Transformation. We are, we are a church part of the big C. So I don't care where you go to worship. We like it when you come here. But if you want to worship with your mom at their place of worship, go for it. Being a mom today is a tough job. Ladies, is it not? No response. Okay. It's hard because I know that there are sleepless nights. And it brings more than your share of trouble into your life, considering all the thankless job of raising kids. I saw this comic strip earlier in the week, and it illustrates um, what I want to talk about today. See, it's a couple of boys talking to their dad about what they're going to give their mother for Mother's Day. The older boy says, instead of just another bottle of perfume for mom on Mother's Day, we're giving her a promissory note stating that we will never cause another problem, fight, or be in trouble ever again. The dad replies, do you really expect to keep those promises? And the younger son, realizing the impossibility, responds, can I borrow some money for some perfume? I remember making promises like that. Very, very difficult to keep. I too bought perfume. It is impossible for kids to not cause problems for our moms because our moms care so much about us. They will always be concerned with everything that's going on in our lives and how things are going. That doesn't stop. God has designed moms with a caring heart and a caring soul. But even so, even though I believe God has designed moms to have a heart and love for their kids, it's still hard for moms sometimes and it's even harder for a mom that glorifies the Lord this morning in honor of all moms here today we are going to look at a woman who is a model of motherhood I want to show you five things that you can learn from her on how moms can be godly moms <laughs> actually I'm applying this to moms for Mother's Day but it's something that will be applicable for all of us here including men mothers fathers single married male female because ultimately this is how we can become godly people most of today's lessons will be from 1st Samuel chapter 1 and 2 but I do have some supporting scripture scattered about so if you would turn to 1st Samuel chapter 1 if not it will be on the board there was a certain man from Ramthiam, a Zuphite from the hill country of Ephraim, whose name was Elkaniah, son of Jeroham, the son of Elu, the son of Tohu, the son of Zuf, an Ephraimite. He had two wives. One was called Hannah, the other Penina. Penina had children, but Hannah had none. Year after year, this man went up from his town to worship and sacrifice to the Lord Almighty at Shiloh, where Hophni and Phinehas, the two sons of Eli, were priests of the Lord. Whenever the day came for Elkaniah to sacrifice, he would give portions of the meat to his wife, Penina, and to all of her sons and daughters. But to Hannah, he gave a double portion because he loved her, and the Lord had closed her womb. Because the Lord had closed Hannah's womb, her rival kept provoking her in order to irritate her. This went on year after year. Whenever Hannah went up to the house of the Lord, her rival provoked her till she wept and would not eat. Her husband, Elkaniah, would say to her, Hannah, why are you weeping? Why don't you eat? Why are you downhearted? Don't I mean more to you than ten sons? The first thing I want to share with you is a godly mom faces problems. I know, you're sitting there going, well, gee, Jeff, that's great encouragement. I thought this was supposed to be about Mother's Day. Well, it is. This is an encouraging message today. Listen close. 
I think too often people start thinking that moms in particular, that I have problems in my life, so I must not be living in a godly way. And I must be a bad mom. That is a lie straight from Satan. Listen, Jesus told us that we're going to have trouble in this life. John 16, 33 clearly says, I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble. But take heart. I have overcome the world. Paul echoes this in 2 Timothy 3.12. He says, in fact, everyone who wants to live a godly life in Christ Jesus will be persecuted. Doesn't say might be. Doesn't say could happen to you. It says will. Throughout the Bible, we see people who are striving to live for God and they're facing problems Joseph Moses Joshua Esther and here today we see Hannah we see in these verses that Hannah's husband Elkaniah had two wives and his other wife had children verse 2 tells us that Penina had children but Hannah had none now this is an age when women were supposed to be having children. That's why they were married in the first place, to reproduce. And not only was she not able to have children, but she faced ridicule from this or for this year after year after year. Again, we look at 1 Samuel 1, 6 and 7. It says, because the Lord had closed Hannah's womb, her rival kept provoking her in order to irritate her. And this went on year after year. Whenever Hannah went up to the house of the Lord, her rival provoked her till she wept and would not eat. Can you picture it? Hi, Hannah, could you help me with my children? Oh, wait, I have so many of them, I really need you today. Or, hi, Hannah, would you mind helping me change this diaper? I mean, do you know how to change a diaper? You don't have your own children, do you? I do, but I have lots of them, but I need your help. This went on year after year after year, and I'm sure that Hannah had feelings of inadequacy, and she may have suffered from some type of depression. She would not eat. Lord, what are you doing here? How is this supposed to be beneficial for the kingdom? What was the purpose of her life? And I am certain that there are people here today. Scratch that. All people here today at times may have felt inadequate or depressed or don't understand yet what the Lord has planned for them through the situation that they're in in their life. Maybe there's some here today who haven't been able to have children who've lost a child or are struggling to provide even anything for their family. Maybe you're facing problems and you're thinking, I must not be a good or godly person in the eyes of God since this is happening to me. This message is for you today. Not just mothers, but each and every one of us that are here. To be a godly mom or a godly person does not mean that you are not going to have problems. You're going to face problems, but you need to know that you don't have to face them alone. And just because you face problems does not mean you are not loved by God. But what can we do in those moments when we're feeling inadequate or depressed? Let's see what Hannah did. 1 Samuel 1, 9 through 16 says, Once when they had finished eating and drinking in Shiloh, Hannah stood up. Now Eli, the priest, was sitting on his chair by the doorpost of the Lord's house. In her deep anguish, Hannah prayed to the Lord, weeping bitterly. 
And she made a vow saying, Lord Almighty, if you will only look on your servant's misery and remember me and not forget your servant, but give her a son, then I will give him to the Lord for all the days of his life. And no razor will ever be used on his head. As she kept praying on to the Lord, Eli observed her mouth. Hannah was praying in her heart and her lips were moving, but her voice was not heard. Eli thought she was drunk and said to her, how long are you going to stay drunk? Put away your wine. Not so, my Lord, Hannah replied. I am a woman who is deeply troubled. I have not been drinking wine or beer. I was pouring out my soul to the Lord. Do not take your servant for a wicked woman. I have been praying here out of my great anguish and grief. So what do we see? We see number two, that a godly woman prays. Hannah was pouring out her soul to the Lord. She had some real problems that were causing her pain and anguish, as the scriptures say. But instead of giving up, she looked up. She went to the heavens with her request. She looked up to God in prayer. Most of the time, it's not until we are facing problems that we turn to the Lord. Each and every one of us do that. So often we try to handle things ourselves. Difficult circumstances in our life teach us to persevere. And they help us to mature and rely on God. James 1, 2 through 4 says, Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. Oh, if it could be so simple. But it can. When we don't mature in Christ, when we are not continually counting on him will be lacking in that relationship with him. And that is essential to truly living for him. We must be in constant relying on him. When Paul had this thorn in his flesh, we never know what it really was. God would not take it away because it was there to help Paul to continue to rely on him and to count on the grace of God to strengthen us and get us and get us through. Jesus told Paul in 2 Corinthians 12, 9, my grace is sufficient for you for my power is made perfect in weakness. You see, ask yourself where Christ's power is in your life. Is it leading everything you do? Is it made perfect in our weakness? It's not until we face our problems that our weaknesses get exposed. In areas where our weakness is exposed, we often have no choice but to turn to Christ because we cannot fix it ourselves. That's where Hannah is. That's where she is in her crying out to the Lord. She's crying out to God in all of her weakness. Some of you here today may be suffering through different or difficult issues. I know that. Go to God with your problems. Pray that through whatever you are experiencing, personal, family, work, whatever it may be, God will grow you as he gets you through this. And pray for God to change things. He can and he does. Hannah did not turn away from God. 
She did not leave him when she had problems. She turned to him with her problems. To be a godly mom and express what you are feeling to God in prayer. Just do it. Men, this works for you too. This way, you will be an example to your children. When they look up to you, or your grandchildren, when they look up to you, and you can honestly say, let's pray about it. Being in a relationship with God does not mean putting on a show that everything is okay when it's not. You can be honest with God. Hannah was. Being in a relationship with God means being real. It's expressing how you're truly feeling to God and asking for his help in dealing with it. We were not designed to deal with things without him. Scripture is full of reasons we are to rely on him. And that's what Hannah did. This is what you should do. We need to be praying in everything. Let's keep reading and see what else Hannah did and what other things we can learn from her. Look at 1 Samuel 1, 17 through 20. Eli answered, go in peace and may the Lord, I'm sorry, may the God of Israel grant you what you have asked him. She says, may your servant find favor in your eyes. Then she went her way and ate something and her face was no longer downcast. Early the next morning, they arose and worshipped before the Lord and then went back to their home at Ramah. Elkaniah made love to his wife Hannah and the Lord remembered her. So in the course of time, Hannah became pregnant and gave birth to a son. She named him Samuel, saying, because I asked the Lord for him. So the third thing we see from Hannah is a godly mom trusts God's provision. Now, yes, God did bless Hannah and provide a child for her. And yes, God does change our circumstances sometimes as part of his provision. <clears throat> but sometimes he doesn't change our circumstances, but he still provides for all of our needs. Just as that thorn in Paul's flesh 2 Corinthians 12, 9 again, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. God did not take away the circumstances of Paul, but he provided for him through his grace. He did the same thing for Hannah. Look at verse 18 in 1 Samuel 1 again. Before she became pregnant, before she could have been pregnant, God provided peace for Hannah. It says she went away and ate something, and her face was no longer downcast. He took away that anguish that she felt. He took away the pain that she felt. He took away the emotion. If he can do that for Hannah, he can do that for us. As we trust Jesus for salvation and grow in the relationship with him, and we pour out our hearts to the Lord in anguish, God cares for us. And he provides through the peace that only he can provide. Philippians 4, 6 and 7 says, Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. That is God's provision. And his provision doesn't necessarily mean 
He's going to change our circumstances. Although we certainly can ask him to, the one thing I promise you is that God's provision does change us. Let that sink in. We may still not understand everything, but we don't need to. There's a lot in this world that doesn't make sense. And the enemy tries to tell us that we have to think about those things, that we have to figure out why this doesn't work. Why would someone do this? Why would someone do that? Church, God's got it figured out. Go to him. Stay with him. And all that other stuff is just stuff. It's not bigger than God. It's not bigger than what he can do for each and every one of us and has done for each and every one of us. Instead, we do know everything that we need to know. God cares for us. And he is working out his will in our life. And that is the best place to be. The peace of God, which transcends all understanding. What an incredible God we have that provides for us so abundantly. Philippians 4, 11, 13 says, I have learned to be content whatever the circumstances. Not certain ones, but whatever. I know what it is to be in need, and I know what it is to have plenty. I have learned the secret of being content in any and every situation, whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want. I can do everything through him who gives me strength. I recently did a funeral for a friend of mine. She had cancer, and it was eating away at her body every single day. This lady was a friend who I absolutely loved. I cherished this woman for our friendship and what she brought to me through the Lord. Although she had a son, she always referred to me as BB, baby boy. She told her friends all about baby boy. That was me. When Michelle asked me to officiate her memorial, we started talking and I asked her what she wanted me to share with those that came to honor her. I learned about her past, all the struggles, the hardships, the joy, she shared with me all the wrongs that had been done to her in her life and the forgiveness that she had for those people. But more importantly, she shared with me what it was that got her through all of life. It was the very verse I just read to you. Now, too many people in our world use just verse 13 as their mantra. And they have no idea what it really means because they think that they're an athlete and all of a sudden I can do anything through Christ. He strengthens me. They don't know what the anything is. Michelle knew what the anything was. And that's what I want you to see today. The verses right before verse 13 are the anything. Whatever the circumstances, being in need or having plenty, being content, fed, or hungry. Having plenty or being in want. Her children watched her live out these verses until her final breath. The days I went and held her hand as she was having trouble breathing, she lived this verse. Are you willing to lean on this verse as much as Michelle did? That's what I'm asking you today. The Apostle Paul learned this. That's why he wrote those words. For all of us that we're going through, 
anything and everything we're going through, good or bad. He's there. Beyond that, we recognize that God has desire to bless us as well. In Matthew 7, 11, it says, If you then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give good gifts to those who ask him? We can trust him to provide what we want when it is beneficial to us. And we'll glorify him. And we can trust him to provide peace for us always. Even when our circumstances don't change. But instead, he changes us. It's a mindset. It's, a, it's looking at things differently we ask for prayer all the time and God didn't answer my prayer sometimes the answer is no or not yet praise him through the no's and the not yet he knows a lot better than me being a godly mom means trusting in God's provisions Let's see what else we can learn from Hannah. 1 Samuel 1, 21 through 28 says, When the man, Elkaniah, went up with all his family to offer the annual sacrifice to the Lord and to fulfill his vow, Hannah did not go. But she said to her husband, After the boy is weaned, I will take him and present him before the Lord, and he will live there always. Do what seems best to you. Elkaniah, her husband, told her, Stay here until you have weaned him. Only may the Lord make good his word. So the woman stayed at home and nursed her son until she had weaned him. After he was weaned, she took the boy with her, young as he was, along with a three-year-old bull and an ephah of flour and a skin of wine, and brought him to the house of the Lord at Shiloh. When they had slaughtered the bull, they brought the boy to Eli, and she said to him, as surely as you live, my Lord, I am the woman who stood here beside you, praying to the Lord. I prayed for this child, and the Lord has granted me what I asked of him. So now, I give him to the Lord. For his whole life, he will be given over to the Lord. And he worshipped the Lord there. So the fourth thing we learn is that a godly mom keeps her promises. She didn't have to do it. How many times have we made a promise to God to fix a situation, to get us out of it? Fine. How many times did we not keep that promise? I'm not asking you to raise your hands. The Holy Spirit will do it for you. But I myself can tell you more than I want to count. Hannah kept her promise that she made to the Lord. Now imagine for a moment, you have been unable to have any children your whole life. You have your first child and you give him over to the Lord completely for his service. That must have been extremely hard for Hannah to do. Yet, she knew that the Lord wanted him. Church, we glorify the Lord when we keep our word, even when it hurts. Psalm 15, 1, King David asked this, Lord, who may dwell in your sacred tent? Who may live in your holy mountain? Among other things, God answered in verse 4. He who keeps his oath, even when it hurts. Keep your promises. Our yes should be yes and our no should be no. 
The goal of every mother here should be to raise your children to trust in the Lord and to serve him, even if it requires sacrifice for you. Now, it does not necessarily have to be in what we call full-time Christian ministry, but in whatever we do, we should be serving the Lord. Whether it's in our workplace or our neighborhoods or in our homes, we need to be teaching our kids to serve and talk and walk in ways of the Lord. This is the ultimate goal of parenting and sometimes grandparenting. Hannah did the thing that we all should be doing. In the long run, would it be best for her son, even though it was painful for her? Yes. Godly moms are women of their word. They keep their promises. Finally, when we are living godly lives, even as we experience problems and we pray and we've received the Lord's provision and kept our promises, we find out number five, a godly mom praises the Lord. First Samuel 2, 1 through 2. Then Hannah prayed and said, my heart rejoices in the Lord. In the Lord, my horn is lifted high. My mouth boasts over my enemies, for I delight in your deliverance. There is no one holy like the Lord. There is no one beside you. There is no rock like our God. Hannah praises the Lord because she knew that God had blessed her and that Samuel was blessed of the Lord. She knew and she had given him completely into God's hands. The hands of the one that she could completely trust. The one that had drawn her close just like he draws us. The one that heard her in her distress and her anguish and the one that had provided for her and the one that had blessed her. This was the God that she could trust with her most valuable earthly possession, her son. Church, this is also the same God that you can trust. This is the God who wants to draw you closer to him. The God that wants to listen to you in your distress and to give you peace. The God that wants to bless you. Moms and dads, you can listen. No matter what circumstance you're facing today, you don't have to face it alone. Being a mom is a tough job and has... He's designed this for you to be able to accomplish it with the help of a loving God. My question for you is, have you been seeking his help and his provision? To seek his help and provision, you have to be in a relationship with him. So are you? Are you in a relationship with the one who can provide everything you need. You need Jesus Christ. You need him to pray to, to provide for you. You need him to offer your praise. But mostly, he provides salvation for you and for your family. The simple fact is that Jesus is the only one that we can turn to. He is more than enough. He's everything we need. Happy Mother's Day. Amen. You'll join me in prayer, please.
Father, you have, you have given us words in this book that provide life today, that provides promise today. There are so many stories of women and men that have dealt with the same things we deal with. And you have always given them away to you. You've shown them what it takes to be in relationship with you. Lord, your mercy, your grace, your provision, everything we need can be found in you. We may think at times it's earthly possessions or we may think at times it's our own children. But Lord, you know everything. And you have provided a way. His name is Jesus. As Hannah gave her son in full-time service to the Lord, you turned your son over to death for full-time relationship with us. It doesn't make sense. But you did it anyway. So that you could have this loving relationship. No matter what your trials are, whatever, whatever my trials are, Lord, you have provided a way I thank you. With every eye closed and heads bowed, if there is anyone in this room today who does not have the assurance of heaven, that relationship with Jesus, just raise your hand right where you're at. For the rest of us, before we enter into communion, let's make ourselves pure and holy in the sight of God and ask him to forgive us for our sins. So if you would, repeat after me, Heavenly Father, thank you for everything, for being there for me when I needed you most, and for being there when I needed you least. You've surrounded me, Lord, and for that, I am ever grateful. Cleanse my heart and my mind and my soul as I prepare to join you today in communion. Thank you, Jesus, for being my Savior. In your name I pray. Amen and amen. If you would, grab your wafers and your juice. And as you peel back the top and pull out the wafer, remember what this was. On that Thursday evening as he gathered with the twelve in the upper room, he broke bread, and as he gave it to his disciples, he said, Take, eat, this is my body, which will be broken for you. And every time you do of this, remember me. He then took the cup of wine, and after giving thanks, he said, This is the blood of the new covenant which will be shed for the forgiveness of sins, not just for you, but for the world. Jesus, the blood of the unblemished lamb. He said, every time you drink of this cup, remember me. Father, as we leave this place today, I ask a blessing on all of those that are here, but especially the moms. For the trials and the tribulations that they had raising children, whether their own or someone else's. Bless them today. Let them receive a phone call, an encouraging word, a hug. Lord, you are magnificent and we glorify you. I lift up these ladies and these men and this church, your church, to you today. 
I thank you for giving me the opportunity to lead. It's in your will that I ask all of this be done. In Jesus' name, amen.